Welcome to CoreLogic RP Data's update on housing market conditions for June 2015, brought to you on behalf of Credit Union SA. Last month we saw the rate of capital gains take a breather with dwelling values down 0.9% according to the CoreLogic RP Data Hedonic Index. Despite the month-on-month -month fall, the housing market trend remains very strong in Sydney and Melbourne, while most other cities are experiencing more modest conditions. The weak monthly result can be attributed to several factors. Firstly, the capital gain result for apartments was substantially lower than what was recorded for houses. Unit values were down 2.3% over the month across the combined capitals compared with a 0.7% fall in house values. This trend can be seen across each of the capital cities, however, it is most pronounced in Australia's two largest cities in Sydney and Melbourne, where apartment values had shifted 2.8% and 2.5% lower. The slower rate of capital gain in the apartment sector can probably be attributed to the higher supply levels across the multi-unit sector compared with detached housing. Additionally, we're likely seeing some natural correction in the index after dwelling values rose by nearly 4% over the first four months of the year. Considering that housing market data flows have mostly remained buoyant during May, it's likely we'll see the index move back into positive territory when the June figures are released next month. Auction clearance rates have maintained their readings at close to record high levels, advertised property listings remain lower than a year ago, and homes continue to sell rapidly in Sydney and Melbourne. Once again, the strong data flows relate mainly to the Sydney and Melbourne markets, while most other capital cities are generally showing softer indicators. Looking at the level of capital gains across the past 12 months, dwelling values have moved 9% higher across our combined capitals index, taking values 24.2% higher across the current growth cycle, which incidentally marks its third year anniversary this month. The headline growth figures sound very high, however the growth in dwelling values over the past year ranges from a 15% gain in Sydney all the way through to a 2% fall in Darwin dwelling values. In fact, outside of Sydney and Melbourne, the next best performing capital city over the past year has been Adelaide, where values are 3.4% higher. Moving on to rental markets, the rate of growth in weekly rents has fallen to its lowest annual rate on record at 1.5% growth over the past 12 months. Hobart's recording the fastest increases in weekly rents at 3.5% per annum, while rents have fallen in Darwin, Perth and also in Canberra over the past year. The soft rental market conditions is seeing rental yields trending lower each month, with a typical capital city dwelling now showing a gross rental yield of 3.7%, which is 40 basis points lower than a year ago. The lowest rental yields can be found in Melbourne at 3.3% and Sydney at 3.6% gross, while Darwin and Hobart are showing the highest yields at 5.6% and 5.4% respectively. Adelaide's housing market has taken over from Brisbane as showing the third highest rate of capital gain across Australia's capital cities over the past 12 months. Dwelling values are 3.4% higher over the year despite a 0.2% slip in values over the month of May. The gains are almost entirely due to growth in the detached housing space, with Adelaide house values up 3.5% over the past year compared with a 1.8% rise in unit values. Rents aren't showing a great deal of growth either, with weekly rents rising 0.4% over the past year. However, gross rental yields remain above the capital city average at 4.2% for houses and 4.9% for units gross. With interest rates moving even lower in May, we are expecting the correction recorded over the month of May could be short-lived. Values are likely to resume their upwards trend in June, once again driven by Sydney and Melbourne. However, we are expecting the rate of growth could begin to moderate as the banking sector looks to tighten lending for investment purposes, as well as limit the growth in interest-only loans and low deposit loans. With investors now comprising more than half of all new mortgage originations, a tougher lending environment for this segment of the market could dampen demand enough to ease the level of capital gains. Tightening investment lending will impact Sydney more than other markets, with investors now comprising 60% of all new mortgages across the New South Wales market. Other constraints on buyer demand are housing affordability and the low rental yields on offer across the most active housing markets. Sydney's median house price is now $880,000, while the typical house in Melbourne costs a more reasonable but still high $620,000. The high prices are likely to act as another barrier to entry for many buyers. With rental yields for houses now in the low 3% on a gross basis in Sydney and Melbourne, prospective investors might start considering other asset classes or housing markets where rental yields are substantially higher. Thanks for viewing our latest update on housing market conditions across Australia. 
Of course, you can always find fresh and interesting research on the local housing market at our website and research blog located at www.corelogic.com.au.